What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today's video is finally returning to form of what made this channel, and those are apps. So today I'm taking a look at an app review from a developer named Atif Mahir, if I said it right. Uh, it is called Specs Analysis, it is in beta, so we're mainly looking at the potential of the concept. Uh, versus the final look since it is obviously not out yet fully uh, not in full release at least so this is specs analysis and with this app review I have a few things to say in it that I recommend that should be added before final release whether they are gonna be added who knows but this is what I've seen so far as of trying it out and using it for a couple days so let's get into it <laughs> All right, so before I get into the app that you see in front of you right now, I'm actually going to look at what the description of the app is according to the developer. So this is Specs Analysis Beta. Specs Analysis is a system information diagnostics and auditing application that provides most of the information related to your device. And obviously he says, note that this app is in early stages of development and new features are added gradually. Before I even get into the app itself, there's another thing I wanted to show you all. And that is that this developer, Atif Mahir, has been working on this application for a very long time. He's been working on it since 2015, roughly is what I could find as far back. And basically, this used to be on Windows Phone, if you know those days. So it's gone through a lot of iterations. This is his personal blog on Blogspot, and it's gone through a lot, rewritten in WinRT, um, and then it was rewritten again. It's it's gone through the the, the notions. He specs analysis for Windows 10, uh, and then he updated it with Fluent Design later on, and then now it's come to this current iteration right here. So let's minimize and get into the app itself. So right here. This is specs analysis. This is the beta version. Obviously, you see that I'm running it on Windows 11. And the reason why I'm looking at apps now and the type of apps I'll be looking at going forward, at least related to Windows, is that I'm looking for apps that really, really kind of bring together the whole idea that Microsoft is coming together with with Windows 11 with the whole new UI with the Mica look, which is kind of like glassy but see-through but opaque inside if that even made any sense i'm looking at apps that really take that forward and this does bring that in because you if you look slightly closely here you can still see that it does show through the design it does go through the background you can still see the background a little bit it is very opaque um, but you can still see through it to see the background wallpaper that i am running so that's one thing obviously all apps pretty much have rounded corners so that's nothing different um, the menus and the icons, everything just looks good. The fonts look good. There are a few things that I wanted to point out, but I'll point out later on. So going through the app, I went through the app for a while now, just testing it out, what the point of the app was. Obviously, the point of the app is to see your performance data, or not performance data, but your specs of your system, um, including your monitor, actually. And I have something to say about that. Basically, that tells you it all up front in a nice clean look you don't have to go through device manager to see your specs you don't have to go through system information to see your specs you can see it on his app and it does look good it looks much better and it's much more approachable to an average person or not not an average person but an average person who will need to use this kind of information it does look much better so we go through if i click out you see the different information listed here you got device sensors display processor memory storage network battery input and diagnostics diagnostics is an interesting one because um that's one thing that i really wanted to test because that's the one interactable portion of this application and it's that it tells you it lets you find problems about various little items here um, lcd dimming you can see the dimming color now the problem with this that i have and i'll show you just now LCD dimming, you can see it says how to go back, move your mouse to the top left corner of the window to press and press the back button. If I do that, you have to really hold up there. You don't just go up here. You have to go to the top, find the spot, and then you see it there. So you would think that the arrow is just sitting there already, but you have to actually hover up, wait a little bit, and then you see the back arrow. That lets you go back. I was having some problems with it, so I, I hope that they put a dialogue up or Atif puts a dialogue up that tells you like this goes full screen. You have to hover up, be a little bit more specific so people know how to get out of it. Because one thing you can't do when you click on, say, gradient or any of them is 
you can't hit escape to get out and that's something that i a feature that i wish is added to it to the final release or the next version of it is escape key to get out uh, going out of it like that. So basically all of these do that same thing, uh, similar things there, except they change it up with color, LCD dimming, gradient, um, RGB spectrum, and all that stuff. So let's go back to device tab. You can see system information on there. Obviously you'll see some things blurred out for the video purposes, but you see your system information on there. It's pretty straightforward. Your system language, system family, your architecture. So if you have ARM or if you have X64 like I do, you'll see that. Going into sensors, this is a desktop, so it doesn't have many sensors in it. I'm not even sure if my system has NFC, so unless it does, but it does have these wireless and Bluetooth, so that is correct. Accelerometer and that stuff, that will be in laptops or those two-in-ones that have those rotatable displays. Um, display, display shows your display information. Obviously, you see your PPI. I'm using a super ultra wide, so my Display is a little different from other people's. Um, you see my DPI, you see your aspect ratio. Now, this is where I have a little gripe with the aspect ratio area. When I maximize my display, which I won't do for the video, but when I maximize my display to the 32 by nine aspect ratio, it doesn't actually list 32 by nine there. I believe it shows it as blank because it doesn't have that information to put in that size of a screen. So I wish a thief, one thing that if you can do is look back at the aspect ratios that your app supports to show and um, it does stretch to that size and it looks decent with it but add that information so the app can tell you like hey this is 32 by 9 this is 21 by 9 and so on um, i think there's a few aspect ratios that are missing try to look on the internet you'll see all the little common aspect ratios that people can buy lap monitors with and just include those in if you haven't already and then there's some more things here you got your video adapters so if I click a drop down and I scroll down, you see my video adapter. It is obviously a, my GPU is a GTX 1080 for now. And Nvidia, that is correct. Driver date is correct. Driver version and all that stuff is correct. Now, the one thing that I do have another thing that should be changed in my opinion is this area right here with refresh rate. Um, I think refresh rate should be out of the GPU area and up into the primary display area because that relates to your primary display less so your GPU. So I think that should be pushed out of this area altogether and thrown up here. And then in the GPU area, I feel like it should show how much your memory is on the GPU. So if I have a Ryzen 6800X, uh, let me, 6800 XT, let me see that I have 16 gigabytes of uh, video memory and so on, eight gigabytes with this 1080 and stuff. That doesn't show any of the memory that your graphics card shows right now. So. If you can add that, that's another thing, definitely. And then move the refresh rate area out. And just put it in the primary display area because it makes more sense. It's display um, based, not GPU based. So next thing here, processor. You can see the processor information here. Obviously, I'm running a 5800X uh, eight core processor. And you can see basically that information is pretty straightforward. That information is correct. Memory. You can see the, you know, the form factor. I'm using dim memory, obviously, and my speed is correct. It is 3,200 megahertz. I do have a ridiculous amount. Don't judge me. Uh, so all that stuff is correct. Drop down. I do have four G skill uh, memory modules put in. So you can see that information there. Um, part number is correct and everything like that. Storage. It does show your storage. Yes, my C drive is not named. So that information is also correct. So basically what I was looking for is that I know my computer well because I built my computer, but I was trying to make sure that this uh, diagnostic tool could also see everything that I know of in my computer and it's in the right places. Because when you think of specs analysis type stuff that show you your specs and they can analyze it to see what exactly you are and they break it down, this looks good and it seems to work well, but there are some things that are out of place or some things that should be added when you're looking at specs. Um, another feature that I'm looking to be added into this uh, application is pretty much allowing me to copy and paste and maybe even create an actual report that I can just save to my like a, a .txt file, text file, create a report that does that. Um, so that way I can just have a reference if I'm sending it off to somebody, IT support, whatever it is, if it got adopted somehow, that's just something that I would love to have. Um, another thing, network. You do have network there. You can see exactly what your network adapter is. Mine is Marvell. It is a five gigabyte E, uh, five gigabit connection. Um, you can see all the information there. And then you got your battery information. Obviously, this is a desktop. Don't have a battery, so 
it's not there but if you have a battery it'll show you the information there i hope it shows the battery full charge and the capacity and stuff um, correctly i'll check on my own laptop actually to see if that works correctly and then you got your input devices this is a whole lot i have a lot of input devices but it so far is correct on all the input devices that i have connected i have a lot of input devices connected and then back to the diagnostic page and then you know me the most important tab other than support developer tab is settings i need to see who made the application and i need to see the version of the application and then i also need to see some contact some ways to contact the developer of the application if anything goes wrong or just to give him feedback and he does have all of that stuff there which is great now the other thing too is that the bug reports area takes you to the feedback hub which is great he's implementing the built-in feedback hub instead of a proprietary system to just get feedback so if you already are inside the insider program you already know the feedback hub click that it goes to the feedback hub you see bug reports feedback hub goes in it sees the subcategories pc device pc apps subcategory specs analysis and you can add feedback just like that um, one thing that's also broken that i noticed is the theming uh, when you hit light and dark dark works because i'm on dark theme right now but if i want to switch themes um, until you it looks weird until you restart the application and then it shows it correctly so Here's how it looks when you still have it, when you just click it. This is how it should look normal for dark theme. Light theme should not look like this, so I'll show you in one second. So this is how it's supposed to look like if it refreshes automatically to each theme. Uh, you can see that this is light theme. It's using my system setting because for some reason, when I clicked light theme, it keeps going back to system setting no matter what. So that probably needs to be fixed too. Uh, switching to dark theme, you see it's kind of similar to what I showed you before where it's kind of broken. And then when I switch my system personalization over to dark theme, then it works. I'm not sure if this is just a Windows 11 issue or if this is just the, how the app is so far. So if it is a Windows 11 issue, then obviously it just needs to be tweaked for Windows 11. But if it's an app issue, I hope uh, he can fix it. So other than that, the application is good. The application, it looks good. It just is, it's clean. It's much easier on the eyes than Microsoft's built-in system tool, um, system information tool. So definitely kudos to that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about specs analysis. It is in beta. It's not fully out yet. He's been working on it. It's like his baby project. He's been working on it for a while. He's been updating it to each version of Windows to work with the theme of the current Windows version. Let me know what you guys think about that. It is free on the Microsoft Store right now, so you can just download it, try it out, and then remove it when you're done. So let me know what you guys think. My name is Kwaku, and uh, stay tuned for more apps. I have a whole list of them. And if you are a developer and, or you know of an app that fits the thing I'm looking for, let me know. Send me an email, nextgenwindows at gmail.com, or just leave it in the comment section below. Not a link, but just the name of the app, and I'll see if it will end up on a video. And as always, take care, everybody.